So my friend and I were talking in and we were, we were discussing the dynamics of, of attraction. And I was talking about the subconscious and I was talking about how everyone's giving off a subconscious frequency pattern and the person that you are trying to woo or find attractive, although they're not consciously aware of it, they're picking up on the subliminal energy or emotional frequency pattern that you're transmitting. And this is why so much of attraction is unexplainable to people. Initially, they'll say, I don't know, there's something about that person that I like, or I don't know, they're good looking, but like there's just something about the vibe I don't like, right? And they, at first, they can't consciously define it. And that's because initially everything's happening subconsciously. You're picking up on a sound that your conscious ears can't hear. You're picking up on subliminal body movements and you're picking up on an overall energy field because that's all a person is, is an energy field. And so when you're trying to get someone to like you or you're trying to get someone to call you or text you or you're, you're trying to get this person's number or you're trying to get back together with someone, we were talking about all of this and my friend said, well, that's exactly what I read in a book recently. And in this book recently, it was talking about not voluntarily giving information out. And I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. This is exactly what we're talking about. Because needy is creepy. So when you really want this relationship to work out and you walk up and you're like, hi, my name's Jake. My address is this one right here. Here's my first phone number. Here's my second phone number. Here's my third phone number. And guess what? I'm single. Are you single? What do they do? stay over there before I call the police, right? Why do they do that? Because needy's creepy. Even if you say it in a nice way, even if you say it in a way where you're like, you worked on your tone and you're like, hey baby, I'm single. Here's my first phone number, my second phone. It doesn't matter what tone you use. When you're voluntarily giving out too much information, or you're trying to push so hard to make it work, you push the very thing away. And this isn't just in romance, this is the exact same thing that happens in business. This is the exact same thing that happens with clients, right? Like the real estate agent that you're thinking about working with and then you, they're so pushy that you're like, ew, I don't like that vibe. So what I invite you to do is to give up trying to get this person to like you. Instead of taking your energy field and trying to push it onto them, keep your energy field right here. And when you, when you let go of trying to force them to like you by making double, triple, quadruple extra efforts, guess what? They can pick up on that shift. And when they pick up at that shift, it becomes desirable because you're no longer in a place where you're desperately desiring them. And that builds unconscious intrigue. So right now, if you're trying to get someone to call you, to text you, to date you, ask yourself, subconsciously, even if you're playing it cool, subconsciously, am I coming off as needing this? Subconsciously, am I coming off as trying too hard to get this? Subconsciously, am I coming off as I, my life will not be as complete as it could be if I don't get this thing? I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do if they say no. Please have me back. Your vibe's right here and their vibe's up here. You can't get, you can't get there by pleading at it. And when that shifts, everything shifts. So let's break down a couple big ideas and some big takeaways to implement this into your life right now. So here's the first question. Would you find yourself attractive? And I'm not just talking about the way that you look. Would you find yourself attractive from the way you show up to your life? Or do you really want this relationship to work because you don't find yourself attractive so you're trying to fill the void with it? And if we're honest enough with ourselves, that's when we find out how to take our life to the next level, romantically, spiritually, professionally. That was exactly what happened to me. I've told the story about before I met my wife, this woman, I really liked her. I tried so hard to make it work. I finally got her and then the relationship fell apart. 
And after the relationship fell apart, I realized there was all these things about myself that I, that I didn't like that much or I wasn't giving enough energy to myself. And so I was trying so hard to make this relationship work to fill that void, right? And she subconsciously picked up on that and she didn't like it. She couldn't vocalize it, but she subconsciously picked that up. So then the question is, would you find yourself attractive? If you had a friend that was you exactly, and then you had another friend, would you pair them together? And if the answer is no, it's no worries, then it's just, all right, it's go time to work on myself. And when your energy shifts to working on yourself to say, well, do I have a career that I love? Do I wake up and do stuff that I like? Or do I do stuff I hate all day? Am I in good health? Am I in good shape? Am I happy? If not, what should I do to become more happy? And when we shift this way inner, we become more confident, we become more grounded. We don't need like the best pickup lines in the world because when we meet the right person, we're confident and grounded. So then we're not voluntarily trying to give out so much information like we said earlier. Here's my third phone number, here's my pager, here's my backup line, this is my license plate number if you ever see it. You don't do any of that because why? Because dude, you're stoked off your life. And that's the vibe that makes other people want you. Number two, develop your own practice, whatever that is, right? It doesn't need to be some super spiritual stuff about meditating, it might be hiking. You gotta find your own, uh, I forget who said this, maybe it was William Blake or F. Scott, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Everybody has an inner Tahiti. You have to find your inner Tahiti. And your inner Tahiti might be uh, that you're a coder. Your inner Tahiti might be the Stairmaster and you just freaking love it. But you don't do it as much as you should and you could be in way better shape. Your inner Tahiti might be hiking. Your inner Tahiti might be photography or art or sales or real estate or building or art or tea. Whatever it is that makes you come alive, you have to build your life around that thing. Otherwise, you're never gonna be as confident as you could be. You're never gonna know yourself as well as you could be. And when you do these things, it's so ironic because that's what makes you more and more and more attractive. So you find your practice. Do I need to exercise more? Do I have any written goals? Right, ask yourself that. Do you have clearly defined goals? If I walked up to you and I said, what are your goals? Do you, do you know what they are? Not like, I want my life to be cooler, but like real goals. Here's my financial goal, here's my career goal, here's a clearly defined goal right here. Because when you have those, that's when you become a self-directed person an independent person and a self-directed independent person in today's world where everybody else is just a sheep, it becomes sexy. Last but not least, ask some unique questions. So, um, what's your address? Not a good question. Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Not a good question. So, um, what'd you do today? Everyone asks that. Do you have any good questions? If you don't have any good questions, maybe think about it a little bit. What are the actual answers you would like to know about someone that you may spend the rest of your life with? Like really, what, what are they? What's their big goal? What's their big dreams? Who do they wanna be in life? Like actually, what are they? Not like your story. Well, right now I'm an English teacher and I don't really like it. Right now I work for this real estate company and it's okay, I'm not sure I'll be there forever. You know, we're not trying to find out their story. We're trying to find out who they really wanna be. Like when they're lying in bed at night, right? And they're not distracted by some other naked person in their bed because they're single too. And they're sitting there <laughs> and they're like thinking about their life and they're imagining it. What do they imagine? And they'll probably say, Whew, I've never been asked that question before. And it'll make them a little uncomfortable. And then they'll be like, whoa, this person's like something about them. I like it. 
I don't know what it is about you, but you're asking me questions nobody else asked me before. Oh my God. What do you think? Right? Because you want to be a pattern interrupt person without doing it on purpose. And by pattern interrupt, nine out of 10 people are pretty similar. The dates are pretty similar. They talk about the same things. There's not much of a difference. Maybe they look physically a little different or a lot different, but other than that, everyone's kind of the same. We're just kind of a bunch of sheeple. A pattern interrupt is you become the type of person that's vibe is so different and conversation is so different that when the person leaves talking to you, they go, that person was interesting, right? You can't change everything about the way that you look, but you can change everything about the way that you project your vibe. And there's two ways to do that. One is through manipulation and you find out all these like secret psychological techniques to, you know, convince someone you're cooler than you are. Well, the other way is just quite simply to have depth to yourself. So think about what some of those questions are. And instead of like your first three questions when you meet someone at the coffee shop, hey, how are you? I'm Jake, what's your name? Right, we just went right back into volunteering information that we shouldn't have. Just ask a question, an interesting question. Like a question like, how many seconds would it take you to say the alphabet backwards? No, I'm just joking, but real depth to it. And when you can go there within yourself and you can help someone else go there with you, you're also going to find out, is this person that you, maybe you think is attractive and you're like, wow, I'd like to really be with them. But then maybe when you start asking some of those questions, you find out that they don't have the depth you want and it's really not someone worth the investment long term. That's great too. It just gives you more clarity to attract the right person next. So right there down below is my free success hypnosis. This literally is life changing. It's about reprogramming your subconscious mind. Here's how it changed my life. Because when I was 20 years old and I finally got my big dream and goal for my life and I was gonna write books and do all these things, uh, I had so many bad belief systems about it. I wasn't even sure if I could do it and I got denied by all these publishing companies. And most people thought I was crazy. So I started brainwashing myself. I started hypnotizing myself. And it, my life changed forever. And the reason it was so powerful is because I finally had confidence. I knew I was doing something different and unique, but I didn't know if it was gonna work, if I was just gonna be a giant loser or not. But then finally, the hypnosis gave me confidence. It gave me confidence in my life. It gave me confidence in my business. And that translated into uh, romance. And so I highly recommend you use this. It's free. It's right there down below. It's jakeshypnosis.com. It's right there down below. jakeshypnosis.com to reprogram your subconscious mind. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, bell notifications, what notifies you for new videos. Give me a comment down below and let me know what you think of today's episode. YouTube's always changing their algorithms, all the big channels on YouTube that you see that pop up first. Those channels pay YouTube to pop up at the top of the feed. We don't do that, so if you think we're doing a good work and some of this stuff's important, one of the ways you can help is just uh, give us a comment and a good old like right there down below. We'll see you next time.